Okay, so for the next um, item that I'm going to demonstrate, it's going to be something called an FL browser. So let's go take a look at it here in the documentation. And the browser is right there, okay, under B. And you notice that there's different types of browsers. Now, first off, I got to tell you, a browser is not a it's not like an internet browser. It's actually, uh, some other toolkits call it a list box. It's essentially a box that you could type in single lines of text. Now there's different types of them, and the one I'm going to be demonstrating today is called a hold browser because I'd like to be able to select one individual line in the browser. And you can obviously, you can click and uh, see it says, it lets the user select a single item. So that's, that's really useful for me. And um, of course, you know, notice what it inherits from, and you can go and find all the methods that it's associated with it. But let me show you the source code here. Um, I've called mine Brow1. And so let's go down to making the window first. I make a window, and um, actually, you know what's probably better is let me show you how it runs first, and then we'll go through it. So. Right now, my focus, without even having to click anywhere, is here. So I can type in a name and hit enter in the input box, and it shows up in the box above. I can um, type another name, and uh, type another name, and they just keep getting added to the box there. The other thing I can do is I can click in the box, and I can scroll, I can use my arrow keys to go up and down. And notice that when I do, the output box at the top is going to be displaying what is in my list box. The other thing I could do is I could use a, a button to create a callback that opens up a file name. Now let's take a look at what's in this uh, file name. So maybe I could just open another terminal just temporarily and go, um, go cat names. And you can see what's inside that file is just a bunch of names. That's it. Now if I go back to my thing here and I go OK, notice all those names appear in there again. I can do it again. I can add all those names again. And let me do it one more time. And why am I doing it so many times? Because ta-da, magic. As soon as you add more, then the number of names that'll fit inside the box, then it automatically creates a scroll bar that you can use with the scroll button or by dragging it. And you don't have to create a separate scroll bar for that. It just is created automatically. And you can now uh, scroll in here. And as you change what name is highlighted, it changes in the top bar as well. OK? And of course, you could also add more from here as well. So let's go take a look at the code. And um, here is the code. OK. OK, so um, here is the code. Once again, I create the window. Now I'm starting to add widgets to the window. I cr add the browser. And like I said, I'm creating an F FL hold browser. Um, and so that's the dimensions of it. And then I make an output widget where whatever I've selected appears in the output. And then I've made a button that will open more uh, files and import the text and populate the browser with whatever the strings or whatever strings are inside that text file. And then an input bar where I can actually type into it. Here are the callbacks. There's three callbacks. and by default, I want the input box to take focus because I just want to be able to start typing immediately. I don't want to have to actually click inside the input box. So if you'll notice, like when I run it right now, I can just start typing here and I don't have to I did not have to click in here before I start typing. Now that's kind of convenient and that's because of line 35. So now let's take a look at the callbacks. So the first one I'd like to show you is the input button. So what it does is it grabs the, the text inside the input button. Then it adds it to the browser. 
And when you do add, it adds it to the bottom of the browser. And once again, if we go to the browser class here, right, and does it have add? And there it is. Okay, so adds a new line to the end of the browser. Okay, and you can send uh, other information to the callback of the browser, but I'm not. I'm just sending a string, which is exactly what is described here. And so when I go back to my code, um, by the way, width.value was, remember what width is in this case, width, this widget is the input, it's INP, right? because that's the callback for the input widget, which is an FL input right there. So it, so this um, WID is actually, I could replace it with INP, but it doesn't matter. It's going to do the same thing. Then I actually set the value after I type it in. I set the value to um, nothing. And then I take focus again. So essentially what that means is, oops, when I run it, after I type something in, you know, like Sam, now when I hit enter and the callback is executed, it takes that string, puts it here inside the browser, but then it also erases that string so that, and it gives the focus back to the input widget so I could type in another name and then, and so on and so forth. And that's kind of cool as well. And so that's all happening here in these lines here. So I take it, clear it, take the focus back. Now, in terms of the callback for the browser itself, I figure out what line I'm on, and the value of the browser tells me what line I'm on. So this is an integer, okay? And that integer starts at one. Maybe I should have put this comment on the line above, okay? And then I actually set the output. So I set the output value to the string returned from that position. So um, perhaps I should show you in a different way. So now you can actually see my output and my code at the same time. So here I've got the the output and when I click open here so this is my button callback I'm opening up a file chooser which is gonna look for txt files and I open that file for reading and I iterate through every line in it and I take those lines and I omit the last character which is the new line character because it's a file and I add it to the browser so if I click open here and I click names and I click OK, then all the strings that were in that uh, file get added to my browser. And now when I click the browser, so that's what's happening when, when you see when this, this function is happening when I click it. So when I click it, that callback just executed. And what it did is it found the position. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So POS is six. That's the position. And then I'm saying get the text in that position and set it equal to name. And then take the take that name string and uh, put it as the text in the output. So here is here you see is my output box. Uh, right that I created here that's my FL output and so whatever I select here ends up being copied and put into this out output box above and that callback browse CB is being called every time this receives an event so one of the ways in which I'm doing this is I don't even have to use my mouse I can just use my keyboard I can go arrow down or arrow up and the callback for the browser will be called and the browser will only allow me to select one at a time and so that's really cool. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot from uh, today's lesson. And as usual, the code will be on my website, arcalition.com forward slash CS2. Bye, see you next time.